Hey, this is John Orberg, and we're thinking through some of the most important questions of life to help us connect with God and move towards our best self. And I'm so grateful for those questions. Today is uh, very special because I'm going to welcome a friend to this conversation. Uh, Nicole Eunice is joining me. Hey, Nicole. Hey, John. I'm so glad we get to spend a few minutes together. And I just picture all of us together, you know, in a circle um, thinking through the harder questions of faith and hopefully finding some encouragement along the way as well. So a lot of you will know Nicole. She is a uh, author, a pastor, a thinker, a very gifted speaker, does a lot of work in spiritual formation. How do people grow spiritually? Um, uh, I also have a friend named Eunice Nichols. And so <laughs> I always feel like I have name dyslexia when it's Nicole Eunice, Eunice Nichols. Um, <laughs> Yes. But I, I'm so grateful. Uh, if you don't know Nicole, she just has a wonderful mind spirit. She preached sometimes at the church where I used to serve, and people just love that. Nicole, anything else that people ought to know about you? Gosh, I think what everyone needs to know is that I'm also the mom of three teenagers, and my oldest is graduating from high school on this very day. So I um, I feel all of my emotions on time lapse, like I don't feel them as it's happening. So check in with me in a week and I'll probably have some more thoughts about love and grief and, you know, just different stages of life. But yes, we're very thrilled over here to launch our first one into the world. I am uh, super honored and appreciative that on this really special day you would join us. What is the name of your child that's graduating? Charlie. So Charlie Eunice, he is graduating today and we are all really excited for him. And God and be with and bless Charlie and launch all. him into a fabulous <laughs> life of learning and deep joy. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So actually uh, it's quite appropriate then that we're going to look at two questions today and both of them really have to do with relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, and both are really naughty. Uh, they're the kind of question that uh, you don't solve forever. You just live with. Yeah. And here's the first one. Okay. Uh, Nicole, how can I make peace with somebody who never wants to see me again and mm. is relieved that I am no longer in their life? Mm. Gosh, I just... John, I just imagine like writing that question, you know, and all the story behind that and all of the the pain and probably the hope and the trying and all of that that's gone on. But um, and, and I know you and I both, we have a background in psychology. And so oftentimes I'm, I'm first entering in and trying to enter in with a sense of, yeah, what would that feel like? And I think um, for me, I think the thing that would be the stickiest in my faith in that particular scenario is I'd be asking the question, what does resurrection life really mean? If, if something is, is, if something is completely dead and I have no more control over like anything that I could do, how is, what is really like living hope and resurrection life look like? And I think that might be the deeper question. Um, and one of the one of the things that I appreciate so much about dealing with hardship and relationships is I really think this is the way that we all become theologians. Like we really are asking the questions, yes. where is God in suffering? And um, what does it mean to have a loving God? And what does it mean to live in this world, right? So- And not just in an abstract way, yeah. but- how does that change the way I look and the change, change the way that I feel and how do I relate to this other person? Yeah, gosh, I don't. And I think, John, I can't think of any hardship in my life personally that hasn't impacted, shaped or deepened my understanding of God. Like, so, which means there is actual growing to do, you know, between what I thought I believed or what I thought I understood and then trying to really work that out through pain. And I think in this particular situation, one of the things that I take comfort in, I, I, it's not an answer, but it's a, something I take comfort in, is that Jesus had difficult relationships in his earthly ministry. And at the end of the day, like the rock bottom thing that I believe is Jesus was sinless. He was perfect in the way he engaged with, you know, grace and truth. And he had people who walked away from him. He had people who misunderstood him, betrayed him, um, couldn't get on board with him. 
And that doesn't mean, you know, that we're perfect in everything that we did, but it does leave room for earthly relationships to not be reconciled. Yeah, I think that's so good. I think that notion that uh, actually part of the answer to the question is uh, I cannot make peace. Mm. Um, I I can want for there to be peace and I can try to bring peace. I remember many years ago in a really difficult relational situation, Mm -hmm. realizing um, that I desperately wanted intimacy with somebody Mm -hmm. and that might never happen, but that I could still love them. Mm. And so there was something for me about in that moment kind of distinguishing between intimacy. Intimacy is a feeling or a sense of experience of closeness. Yes. And that I can't have if the other person doesn't want it. Um, What's your, what is your, what are some of those, um, let's call them phrases or prayers that you would use in a time like this when there is that brokenness in a relationship and that that hardship or that hurt comes to, to the forefront. What are some of the ways that you engage with God in that place? Yeah. Um, one is just to name the hurt. I, you know, mm. part of what I feel like I'm learning a lot in this season is um, that idea of owning with difficulty, observe it, welcome mm. it and name it. This just makes mm-hmm. me sad. And sometimes I just need to be sad. But then mm. to say, even if I can't be intimate, um, I can will the good for this person. Mm. And there's a strange uh, kind of comfort in saying, mm-hmm. yep, you might be able to hold me off, but you cannot keep me from loving you. Mm-hmm. I can still will your good and pray that for you. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, th- that just that thought of mm-hmm. uh, I can continue to love, I can continue to mm-hmm. will the person's good. Yeah, and and the and the trust there of I can surrender this person's life to the love and care of our heavenly Father, and I can seek the love and care from our heavenly Father that I need. So many times, I think we can get so hung up in like God, would you fix this thing that we don't get to what you said, John? I feel hurt, and I can actually seek the comfort of the Spirit in where I am, and that is a prayer that I believe God answers even when maybe this other piece doesn't feel answered or doesn't feel resolved the way that we would desire in our human wisdom. No, Nicole, I think that's so good. I think, um, uh, you know, um, I never have to give up ultimately uh, Mm -hmm. that notion that uh, time lasts a real long while and then there's eternity. Mm -hmm. And so it may look today like the relationship will never be repaired, but I don't have to predict tomorrow or yes. next week or next year. Uh, mm-hmm. Other days will come. And that beyond that, um, uh, that notion of prayer, uh, I remember Dallas Willard writing in one of his books about Jesus with Peter, where Peter's going to go and deny him, and Jesus knows mm-hmm. this. And he doesn't try to fix him, and he doesn't give advice. What he says to him, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. Mm-hmm but I have prayed for you. And it's like, uh, I think sometimes I can dismiss prayer as it's not very much. It's, yeah. it's kind of abstract. It's kind of thin. It's kind of distant. But really for Jesus, who would have been the best advice giver in the world and could have come up with real good solutions for Peter, mm-hmm. he doesn't try to fix him. He just, uh, for Jesus the best thing he could do for Peter was to pray for him. And that thought helps me. Mm. John, I wasn't planning on crying here in the middle. <laughs> I wasn't either. It's your fault, darn it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Nicole, just, uh... this is wonderful, and it's flown by. We actually had another question, but there's not time for it. So <laughs> yeah. would you be willing to come on another time? And... I would love to. I would love to. I think um, I got a chance to look at some of the questions that have come in, and they're so rich and so real. And maybe I would say for you, John, and probably I'm, I'm going to speak for you, that I think I can relate and resonate with some aspect of every single question. So, yeah, I'd love to come back. Um, I would love that. Meanwhile... Uh, Have a wonderful rest of the day and many blessings on Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this community of the Withered Hand. I'm really grateful, Nicole. Absolutely.